All right, thank you so much for choosing to stay with us. Now, in this last 30 minutes, we make sense of uh, the statement issued by Amani National, Amani National Congress Party leader Musali Modavadi, who called for the total disbandment of President Uhuru Kenyatta's cabinet on accusations that they have failed to serve Kenyans uh, the utmost honor in terms of uh, the service delivery. This has also faltered the government on the 16% VAT previously and also the halving of that to aid by President Uhuru Kenyatta, saying that the government is overborrowing while there is endemic corruption in government institutions and agencies in the country. Well, does he stand to benefit or who stands to benefit? I mean, opposition vacuum as ODM whips its members to support the president's proposed halving of the VAT from 16 to 8%. And it's Musalia Mudavadi on course of four, a better service delivery as the opposition kingmaker in the country. Karl Max Odiambo, I'll come to you on this. Going by this statement, and he has been critical of the government, not uh, once, not twice, but on many occasions, faulting the government on what he said was of a borrowing, perhaps uh, in terms of also uh, saying that uh, in taxing the fuel uh, was uh, targeting a low-lying fruit. He also uh, talked about uh, the fact that it's going to be pushing the country to the point of economic crisis and uh, the risks of inflation and employment. In what he said, those strategy measures announced by the president is not well off for the country. Well, does... Musale Mudavadi now appears to be the person who is the salvage point for Kenyans in terms of speaking about issues that matter. And uh, does it look like the person that uh, Kenyans should be looking up to in terms of the concerned authority or the political player out there who thinks about their welfare? Um, thank you, Ayub. But before I get to uh, Honorable Musale Mudavadi take, uh, I think there was some... I just wanted actually to put more in terms of strategy measures that I think uh, we forgot actually to mention. You know, there is this KRA and the KEBS. I think the president need to do an overhaul so that if that is where we are looting, uh, we, are, we are losing a lot of money, then these people, we need to get them out of that office. Then we get new people in that place. Then let's seal all the corruption uh, loopholes. Because if corruption is eating into us and we don't even budget for it, then we don't need it. Seal all the loopholes for the corruption, and then we talk of the austerity measures that can help the, the country. Then comp can we complete the parastatal reforms? Do you know, if you get to the roads, I don't know, there is Kera, there is Kura, Kura. there is Kena, there is so many things that you don't even understand why we have so many of them. We also have to Without we also any have given <laughs> functions, <laughs> it's yeah. a duplication. Go to energy. You get to Kenya Power, uh, 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 I mean Kenya Power, there is also Kenya Electricity uh, tr uh, Transmission Company, there is Kenya Power, what? there is Tima House, there is Electricity House, and what they are doing is just one thing. So why don't we actually get into the reforms and get this, because I don't know why, how Tima House and Electricity House are different. If you get whatever is being done in the Electricity House, the same thing being done in, in the Tima House. So these things, I think the parastatal reforms must be completely done so that we get in, in line with what Kenyans really want to save that. But uh, coming back to your, uh, I mean, uh, to, to Musalem Mudavadi, he has really been doing tremendously well because there is no, nobody or nowhere on the earth somebody will come and tell you that be the opposition of a country. But what you will be doing and how you program yourself, how you organize yourself, that will automatically give you a leeway. Now he needs to take over, not only to give the, I mean, uh, statements, but he needs now to get back to the people. Like this, if these people are going to pass this uh, given memorandum, it is high time now he brings the Kenyan people out. Because if we won't defend ourselves, then we will be misused each and every single, single day. He has been doing very well in terms of corruption. When it was, uh, there was sugar scandal, he came out very clear. He has been also giving so many solutions to the, uh, to, uh, to the executive. I don't know why they are not listening to him and also getting to the level whereby they understand that it is not about talking, but it is about giving uh, I mean, uh, solutions to these problems. Because we cannot be good at actually talking of problems, but we cannot be offering solutions to the problems. Okay. So if the members of parliament are really understanding what is taking place, they need to actually be with the people. And in support, Musali Mudabad is talking of something very, very, very good. Can we dissolve and actually do a re-election? Even though it will be a tall order, because if you look at uh, if you look uh, the, the current uh, Kenyan constitution, it will not be an easy thing for us actually to send these people home. Because by the way, we are at the mercy of the president. We can actually come up with, because I think there are two de uh, distinct devices that can actually take us in terms of taking these people home. That is one, the referendum. Two, we can talk of the initiative. Three, we can talk of, um, uh, I mean, um, the plebiscite. We can as well talk of a recall. But if you look at all the four I'm mentioning, there is no clear way whereby a common citizen can actually take these people, take these people home. 
you will have to get back to the uh, president, I mean, uh, to the parliament. The parliament cannot debate what is taking them home. Even if you want to have all the signatures signed, there is no any other way again that this will not pass through them. So it will be a tall order. But again, we have to speak about it. And uh, actually, there are some reforms that can be done so that these things they no longer we no longer only talk about a process. Okay. But we have to make sure that they are going to happen. Okay. Then uh, let's couple it up. Uh, okay. Fredrick Okango here. We see the calls by also your party leader who uh, issued a statement pertaining that and also calling for the 0% uh, tax on fuel. Uh, we are seeing the likes of Muslim whatever they come in uh, to say that they, there's, need to tax, there's no need to tax uh, fuel in the country. And given the example that once the fuel gets into the country, it's important, already the, ta the tax levy is there and there's no need of retaxing it again. So does it also speak to the fact that despite the whipping of members around by the president and the opposition chief, ODM Raila Odinga, they are also the voices of reason here, the embodiment, the voices of the embodiment of reason in the society who can as well take up the void, the vacuum, and speak to Kenyans on issues that matter to them economically. I will tell you without a fear of contradiction that as a party, our consistency since the last election has brought us where we are. We have been consistent on what is happening in this country, especially on the national platform. And we have said that what we need to fix, we need to fix our legislation. We need to fix the way executive conduct business. We need to ensure that the judiciary is supported to have the corruption cases finished. Okay. And that's why we were lobbying for the judiciary to get at least more funds after they were denied or after their fund was, was a bit of it was, was scrapped off. We have said that we are going to change our politics. And I'm saying it this. When I leave here, I'll go to another session, I'll say the same thing. Okay. We are demanding that the VAT, whether it is 1%, 8%, 16%, it is unnecessary. If only we can make prudent use of the finances that we have, if only we can take drastic, drastic austerity measures that we have outlined in our statement and advisory letter to the president. Now, opportunity okay. to lead this country is not an opportunity that you are given by the people. It's an opportunity that you identify when there's a problem and you offer a solution contrary to what the government and whatever leadership in place is doing. We have identified that opportunity and we have told Kenyan people that reject any attempt to be overtaxed. That right is in the constitution. You can apply it either directly to your uh, democratically elected representative or directly as you as an individual. Unfortunately, the democratically elected individuals who okay. are members of parliament have failed. Now the members of, 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 of the public, I am calling upon you, take this right into yourself and exercise it because that is the only way that we are going to save this country. Lastly, we know that if we don't fix our issues, okay. somebody is going to fix it for us. The two coalitions, the two political formations, have mobilized their members, even though they say sometimes that, oh, we are going to vote on the other side. I can assure you, today in the afternoon, okay. and you'll bear with me, okay. they'll call me and have this discussion, they are going to vote towards what they were mobilized to do. And that is, uh, th that is going to be against the wish of the common man. Somebody in Kibera who buys kerosene to cook will pay more. Somebody in Homer Bay County, in Kasipul Kabondo, who buys uh, kerosene to cook will okay. pay more. Somebody in Gucci, uh, in, 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 in Gucha district, okay. who buys all those <coughs> things will pay more. We are asking Kenyans, let us have a list of members of parliament who will vote against the will of the people. We have three options. Okay. The options are, and I agree with what uh, Mudavad is saying. Mudavad is saying that maybe we need to disband the cabinet because it has failed the president. The, it is at the prerogative of the president to disband the cabinet. But the question is, okay. what next after disbanding it? The first thing we need to do, we need to send all the members of parliament home and call for fresh elections in nine months okay. so that we can save okay. this country 32 billion. Okay. Then we move to the austerity measures okay. that will save this country another 5 billion. Then now look at what else do we need to do in terms of spending? Where are we saving? I can assure you, if we do that, as proposed by Thirdway and Dr. Kuro Kot, okay. we are going to save this country more. And we'd want to urge people like uh, leaders like Mudavadi, let us join hands because now. It is better okay. to have an opposition outside parliament than in parliament. Majority leader and minority leader okay. in parliament today speak one thing. The they are page. one thing because of a hand check. Okay. We are calling Kenyans, ignore 
any attempt okay. to be overtaxed. Okay. And we are telling them, even though but there's no country in the world that has ever developed by overtaxing its, its, people. Cheap, I mean, its, 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 its citizens. Okay. We are asking Kenyans, after today, should the members of parliament pass this memorandum, then we are going to give you the next course of action. Okay, Anthony Bulima, let me come to you on this then. As Budabadi find himself in the intricate of what, what looks like uh, abandoning of its responsibility by uh, the party leaderships of Jubilee and ODM to be specific because uh, it was a meeting, uh, an ODM affair meeting here in Nairobi. And does he come to bridge that gap in terms of uh, um, not in terms of the taxpayers not feeling abandoned in the sense that they don't feel the absence of the leadership because Raila Odinga at some point was passionate who advocated for uh, socialism, inclusion of people in the affairs of the governance. But we see his passiveness, uh, passive, passiveness ever since the handshake and also coming out to support the president's cut or proposals on the tax. But is Mudavadi and Dr. Uh, Ad Mudavadi and Dr. Ekuru Okot coming to bridge that gap in terms of uh, filling up the space and taking up the responsibility of perhaps uh, leading Kenyans from the front and uh, towards perhaps an economic progress and a success story of that? I think to a certain extent, Mdavadi has really tried to be a bit consistent in his uh, desire to, you know, like sustain the, the whole idea of an opposition in Kenya. But um, we are not just looking for an opposition that, you know, opposes for the sake of opposing. We are looking for an opposition that also provides leadership to the large numbers of Kenyans out there. And I think that is where probably, in terms of strategy, that Mdavadi misses out. But having said that, I think what we really need to address in this country <coughs> is not so much about the individual and what they say, but it's about the kind of institutions that we are raising.